and welcome to Flooring Models. Here we are on Tuesday. So very busy day today, to be honest. Mel has been working flat out all day and I was helping out this afternoon and we've been actually getting through all your orders to get them out for obviously all the sale items that we do here at Flooring Models, i.e. washes, sanders, pigments and everything else like that. We are now up to date at last. Apologies it's taken us a little while to get up to speed with it but as a lot of you know we've had the stock come back to us last week and then we've obviously had to get up to speed with it or doing the orders. Mel's been learning the new system as well and generally you guys ordering tons of stuff to beat the price rise that comes up next month. But we are there now, thank God, we're all done. So now they can have fun and games down in the post office trying to sort it all out. So bear with us, if you have put an order in, normally, as you know, we do a same day service on all orders before two o'clock, but we have run three or four days behind on some of them, purely because we went out of stock of washes. And obviously, as you know, the washes are made here. They have to be made to order uh, and then go through it like that. So obviously they take usually 48 hours to 72 hours to make up a batch of, a batch of wash these days. So now we're on top of it all sorted they've all gone out so as of tomorrow things should go back to normal okay as we make our way through but to put it into perspective we've had three giant mail sacks of uh, posts go out today alone uh, and we've been doing that every day since last week's but now we are caught up with it so thank you very much for bearing with us Anyway, today is Tuesday and bringing back Tool Time Tuesday. As I said, not going to do it every single week because otherwise we'd run out of stuff. So today what we're going to do is focus on this actual area here. So obviously it's the spray booths, the compressors and all the bits and pieces underneath it. And obviously all the bits on top of it like that. Let's have a look. <music> Okay then guys, so this is tool time. Uh, we're gonna to talk today really about my spray booth setup. Now, a lot of this you would have seen before because obviously we did a full thing about what we've done here with the 300 series uh, extractors and the ducting work above. If you haven't, go back a bit in time and I did full vlogs about how I put this entire setup together using the ducting pipes and all the bits and pieces up there come through to the lighting rig and everything as you can see, all right? So general overview and then I'll get the camera out and go through in uh, tight. So big thing obviously, with any spray booth first thing you're going to need is an extractor so down here we've got the graphic air these are the 300 series um, uh, extractor systems very good highly recommended just go and buy one you'll never regret it as we spoke about before and I say I'm not going to keep harping on about it but to be honest, this one over here, I've had for the best part of 10 years, and it's still working perfectly well today as the day I bought it. This one over here, to be honest, we bought a couple of months ago to go in to give us a bigger spray booth so we can get better extraction. So when I'm doing bigger models and things like that, i.e. like working on the A10 at the moment, everything goes out, but I've got enough room, light, and cameras to get in. Now don't forget, if you're at home, you're only gonna need one of these. You're never gonna need two, okay? Purely the reason I've done it is so I can get light and cameras. That's all it is, an audio, to be able to pick me up so when I'm working, you can see everything. Technically, you should have a bit of a hood on it. You can focus and you're spraying everything into here. So unless you're spraying something six foot long, you're never gonna need something like this, okay? This is purely overkill from a point of view of trying to keep my health, um, audio levels, but more importantly, camera. So you can probably just see at the top here, we've got one of the cameras, we've got lighting systems. We'll talk about all these in a moment coming down then I run with another camera over here normally and we have another one over here so between all three you get all the details you can see so you're not in a hood which has got shadows and light problems or trying to get a camera in to see anything it's just big and open so the cameras can get in there as well as the light and to be honest audio as well uh, all three have to work together so when you're doing it from my point of view I need something big open so everything can see just as well as me when I'm placed right in front okay so that is the reason for getting going down something here. Already I've noticed a massive improvement in dust, in just from the quality of the image when we're videoing. Obviously, as you know, 4K cameras everywhere now. Um, when I'm shooting in 4K and you look at the raw one, when I had one, you could see it recirculating and everything else. Now, it, you watch it just go voom, straight into these and it's taken out. But as I say, we'll go about them in a moment. Down below here we've got the cupboard and in here, to be honest, we do have two um, compressors. We've got, technically there's three in there, but two we'll talk about. We've got the uh, TC610. Uh, uh, these are the Sparmax compressors and I've got the 620. The 620 is a twin piston system um, To be honest again, it's slightly overkill The reason I have three is obviously sometimes I run with four airbrushes running at one time when we do training courses and, and airbrushing courses and things like that in here So that's why we have the extra one. We've also got another bottle in there But again, I'll get the camera in there and I'll show you all about that system in a moment Airbrushes we'll look at closely in a minute as well But generally you can see from the overall setup it enables me I can get my legs down in 
in here underneath now where I couldn't before and I can sit nice in, in sort of the center and just work through the entire system. So it doesn't matter when we were working on this lump, literally, I sprayed it completely at ease. We had it, to be honest, it was sitting in here like this. So I was spraying it this way. To be honest, that's why you can see a bit of overspray there. Like this, handy, I could then rest my hand. We were spraying, no problem at all. When we wanna move it around, we could then just put it into any angle like this and I could just spray. And as you can see, to be honest, the patterns are all around here in the actual extractor material. It just goes off and does it. And that's a great thing. And I've still got room enough, if you want to, that you can put it down on an open surface. And to be honest, I did have, or used to run, an extension onto this that used to come out a little bit further. It used to come out probably another four inches, and I used to put it down on here. It was a little bit of wood, and then it gave me an even bigger surface. But quite frankly, nine times out of 10, I'm not spraying anything this size, and I don't need it anymore. So that was the reason for actually doing it. But that is the overall of my actual uh, spray roof setup. So what I'm gonna do, we'll get the camera, move it in nice and close, and I'll take around everything. Okay, so down underneath here, in here, if we just move these out of the way, you can see this is my undercover storage area stroke uh, compressor system. So down here, we've got a 3 amp filter system. This is if I'm doing things with aerosol cans. I tend to use it for more outdoor work in here, but anything with heavy duty resin, if I'm sanding resin, stuff like that, I've got one of these. This is a 3M one. We did a review about it and all the rest of it. It's a great bit of kit, works lovely, and uh, not too expensive really at the end of the day. Uh, to be honest, in here we got some a little bit of overhose, just in case we ever need any more. Down in here you can see, so this is, these are both Sparmax uh, compressors. This is the TC620, uh, a slightly different design, so you can see down here to the 610. The bottle size is exactly the same and everything, it's just that up here from the motor point of view, it's actually got two, okay? So it's a twin piston system, so technically it's recharging the tank twice as fast, but it's not. Go off and have a look at the reviews. We've done reviews on both of these compressors and you'll see that actually this motor over here runs faster and actually fills the tank quicker than the actual 620. So why do you need a 620? Purely draw rate. This thing is quite happy. It's at a slower frequency, if you like, or an RPM of motor. So what tends to happen is, is that it's quite happy just to chug along quite slowly uh, and fill up your tank. This one is a lot quicker. So when you listen to them both running together, this thing buzzes a lot faster than this one, in other words. So in other words, it's quite close. You can see I use clear hose, and there's a good example here. Hopefully you can see it. We've got moisture running all through this hose. Now this hose hasn't been used for a while, and that's why there's moisture in there. But if I dump this, if I just let some air out of this, it will close. It's just that this hasn't been used for a while, but you can see we've got moisture in this hose. It's because the hose is far too long, okay? And that's what it is. So we've got moisture running down in this hose. The moisture track is clear there's no water coming out but we've got it sitting in the pipe this is something you do have to worry about and this is why i like to use clear hose okay you can see it if it's braided and to be honest i have got i think it's even in here one of these i have got braided hose uh yep i've got various to be honest in this system just down on the side here but as you can see I've got various braided hoses which I could connect onto here. It's the reason I don't like them is because I like to see what's going on and I, to be honest, I saw this happening yesterday and I thought I'd show you. But as you can see, we've got moisture running in here. Now, if that moisture gets into your paintwork, it causes no end of trouble, okay? You're obviously gonna ask, the next question is, how do you get rid of it? I run quick release systems on all of mine, so obviously it's not gonna work. So what we do, we're just gonna pop this off and we're gonna blow it out, okay? So what it does, it will de- pressure, you see all the water pouring out of this system now and going through. And you can see I've got tons of water coming out of this. And what it is, it's just purely temperature. Okay, so we're just gonna let that go through. We'll let that re-come up. And then what we're gonna do is just continuously letting it power up, we've got my hand over the end, and we'll let that blow out. You can see we've got water flowing down through here. and we're just gonna vent the entire system. The tank, to be honest, on all these compressors, I go around probably every, I don't know, probably once every sort of quarter, every three months, and I empty them out religiously. Um, I did it not so long ago, and we did it, and we have the usual things. To be honest, we didn't have too much in there. 
but we've got a little bit here and that's purely because temperature recently has been a bit up and down the studio has been cold at night and you can see this hose over here hasn't been used and that's got water laying in it as well okay but again you're there so we'll just you just get the water coming out all over your hands but you'll do that a couple of times and then you'll just vent the entire system and you'll be absolutely fine so we just turn that up that's off okay we're just gonna let it come up and these got auto stop start and they sort of the uh, stop start cuts in around about 40 cuts out around about 55 uh, psi so at the moment it's coming out it's 50 psi coming out 55 getting near 60 there we go and that's cut out so i've just got this on last time and now we're running through pretty clear but that's all we do we just do that a couple of times and what you're doing to be honest is emptying out what's in the tank and all that stuff but again hoses don't last forever and this is another classic example of this hose is stretching over time it's getting bigger and it will weaken and all those things literally just like that okay so what we'll do is we'll pop this on the end here but now the hose is cleared and everything else now technically what you should do is run a nice filter just here and you won't have this trouble okay but still got paint in here we've got to clean up my airbrush clearly yesterday okay but that's fine and you can see now the hose is totally crystal clear it's just been because it's been sitting for a couple of days without being used okay so anyway that's those as you can see it's not too noisy it's quite quiet that guy over there is a lot more noisy i can just fire you up and you can probably hear the difference then let's turn him on at the back no he's not plugged in sorry okay but normally he is uh, a lot more buzzy you can see down here we've got an over tank as again this is one of these ones which if you've got an haven't got an auto stop start compressor you can do it with there full review is on there again that's three liter is it three or four liter tank and you can use it as an overflow to one of the others so if you're doing lots of airbrushing work you don't want your compressors running all the time you can use those fill them up as well down in here not so much for doing this work but these are um, the actual uh, cloths for scrubbing your paintwork it's really for cars i tend to do it for cosplay type stuff and when i'm working on bigger things but you've got fine and medium in there they're abrasive you can use them on the model but really for our modeling type things it's too much okay it's 1500 grit and whatever these ones were a lot more okay uh, so yeah that's those filters as you know i make my own filters um you know a lot cheaper Probably not as good quality, I know, but there we go. So that's one of those. And then you've got the genuine one, because we've never used the genuine one in it. You can see it just down on here. And all we do is cut the backing off and do it that way. Um, I must admit, the guys at Graphic Air told me off for doing it, because apparently it's not exactly brilliant, but there's nothing wrong with it at the same time, okay? And then down the end there, to be honest, I've got some plaster Paris, I've got some old spare turntables, and I've got lots of horribly junky bits. But I tend to keep these bits of foam as it acts a little bit like soundproofing but it's still well ventilated and we don't have to worry about anything going on around there just like that okay so if i just move that out of the way we can pop that in there so that's what's going on underneath as i said if you're out there you're looking for a compressor don't bother with a 620 you don't really need it just go with a tc610 i've had this one again probably seven years seven eight years never failed me worked every single day no problem at all tend to use the 620 now purely because it's a tiny bit quieter but on the great scheme of things i don't think anybody normally would notice okay so that's that one moving up just a little bit okay so over here we have got let's move that out just a bit these are both the 300 um d uh technically uh, extractor systems okay they are running side by side in parallel no problem beautiful things highly recommended the best extractor unit i've ever used to date bar none nothing even comes close to these running but they are very expensive you're looking at around about 280 pounds for each unit but think of it as a long-term investment i've had these now for best part as you say this one over here for 10 years and it's still working fantastic so when you break it down over a 10 year cycle for the amount of hours that this thing is running and this thing must be running at least 20 hours a week for the last 10 years and I have no problem with it as I say we've just upgraded to another one so we've got two running in parallel they're wired in together as well so you turn one on they both come on you would have seen all my videos about it now the a10 one is going to be up this week you're going to see everything 
that is down in there just like that. Airbrushes. So I've got quite an eclectic collection. My first ever Hardering Steenbeck airbrush, to be honest, was this guy. Uh, this is the Evolution. Absolutely beautiful and it changed my life when it comes to airbrushing. Before this, I'm not going to say the ones I had, but I did have other airbrushes. Some of them very expensive, a lot more expensive than this, in fact. In fact, three of them were. Um, and they never ever performed as well as this airbrush has done. And because of that, I've literally stuck with them over the years. So I did the Evolution. The next step up before they got fancy and creative with all the other ones was one of these, which is the Infinity, which is my airbrush of choice. I use it all the time. I shoot all my airbrushes with a 0.2 needle in there. Okay, I do have 0.4s and 0.15 needles as well, but honestly, I don't think you need them. Uh, if you want to get very fancy, we've got the AL version here. Again, I wouldn't bother. Uh, it's an aluminium, aircraft grade aluminium. It's a quarter of the weight of the Evo, this one here, but it's exactly the same airbrush. It does exactly the same thing. It's just a quarter of the weight. Okay, there could be reasons why she would need something like this. Um, if you've got like a hand injury, something else like that, and you need a lighter airbrush in your hand, then yeah, obviously this would be the one to go. But when you're paying basically a hundred pounds extra for it to be lighter, and do no difference, I think that isn't. Put it this way, this one here is the same price as this one, and this one does a lot more. It's got a lot more going on at the back and with the trigger system than this one here. So from that point of view, it's nice, but I wouldn't go out and buy one, okay? Uh, I've got a couple of other things going on in here. This is my trusty Iwata. Uh, this is the HP CS. Uh, one, it doesn't have the lock off at the back like the one we reviewed before or anything else like that, but it is a very, very nice airbrush. To be honest, I tend to do all metal finishes with this one. I tend to keep it solely for doing that type of work. It's beautiful work, just unfortunately, this one has the full floating nozzle system, which I know I won't be able to get off on the fly. I should show you. There's a review on this as well, but basically you can take this off and take the entire nozzle off and it, it floats, as in it doesn't screw in or anything else like that. It just sits there, very reminiscent to the Harder and Steenbeck ones, which means if you do screw it up, you don't have to send the entire airbrush back. Uh, we got some other things. We got the trigger pull one. This is the Neo uh, trigger one, if I remember rightly, which is technically, they're not made by Iowata or anything else like that. They're like a, a knockoff Taiwanese version uh, of something uh, that they do with those. So there's that one, which is great for doing bigger stuff. To be honest, that's got a 0.4 needle in it. That's what we use that one for. And then down at the, the cheaper end, if you like, the starter ones, which there's nothing wrong with it. We've got the Neo, as we know, it says Iwata, but it's not actually made by Iwata. It's made by somebody else. Okay, they just put their name on it, but it's still a very nice, great starter uh, airbrush, but if you are into the Harder and Steenbeck family, I would recommend going this way though. This is the Ultra, which is the basic intro version for the Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes. Beautiful little bit of kit, and then the thing is, as you upgrade your stuff, if you make your way up to something like uh, and it, you know the Infinity, you can just upgrade the parts. Okay, so what you can actually do, you can take the needle, the nozzle, the front end, this bottom cap, technically the trigger assembly, and put it all on this airbrush because they all fit. The only thing that is different with the Ultra to the uh, Infinity and all the others is this central body is slightly different because this one doesn't have the interchangeable color cup. It does have one, but it's actually a pull fit uh, into this one. Is this one the pull fit one? or is it sunk in? I think this one might be permanent, but um, yeah, that's the, the difference. The color cup isn't sort of screw in and out. It's obviously a slightly cheaper alloy as well, but it does be great for your starter airbrushes and your things like that. So there we go, that's the airbrushes. And then if we work our way along, so we'll start from left to right. So clamps, these are the blue clamps, which have made their way back, thanks to a couple of the members sorting them out of models I'll go. Friction clamps, beautiful stuff. Uh, if you do have a problem with them not gripping, just get a little bit of IPA or alcohol wipe and literally just wipe off the actual metal bars because they've got some release film on there from you know any part of it, then they're not gonna work particularly well. But I've heard people saying, oh, they lose their grip. No, I've never known that at all. Uh, I use mine all the time. At the top here, we have the ducting system that runs through this. Um, we spoke about this before. I've got one that comes up here. It goes into a box system that's in the middle. And then once it goes in there, it goes in and out, which I'll show you in a moment, okay? That's used using the standard 100 millimeter square boxing. We rigged it up. There's a full video on it. I don't think we need to go through it again. My surface that I use, technically, it's just kitchen towel, multiple layers over the years. We'll just go along and it will do all of those, okay? So down in here we have our paint cleaning station. Absolutely lovely. The only trouble with it is if you've got the pinch top needles like here, 
just be careful as you put them in because if you poke them on the rubber you bend the needles if you've got one of the the better ones in some ways so if you're using one that's got the crown one on the end here it's not a problem because you can't actually bash it but just be careful if you're using something like this to be honest these are great because it's got the end that covers it but they don't fit in okay so you know there's no real right or wrong i must admit when i'm not cleaning out i tend to sit mine like that okay so it's not actually in there badger paint stirrer we've looked at these i love this thing um, I know it's tall Tuesday and I had every intention of doing the paint shaker review but I need to sort out a power supply for it so it'll be up with you in the next couple of days but in the meantime I'm using this guy and since I've been using this I can honestly say my airbrushing has been a lot better I get no problems with paint flow like I used to have back in the day it works beautifully so that's really really handy okay thinners of choice for me to be honest on everything i do is uh, mr color self-leveling thinners as you'll see in a minute i have lots of it i always keep a little bit of flow improver around here at the same time as well as i keep a little bit of uh, retarder medium as well because they're very very handy to have if you've got a situation where you know paint just doesn't flow things like that uh, i think hans had these the other day but i use them as well these are glass pipettes the great thing is you can suck up some of the old cleanup stuff pop it through you've got a pipe cleaner you can keep these and re use them over and over again now i know pipettes are so cheap and you can buy like a billion for a fiver from china but i don't know i just tend to use those i've got a handful of them and i clean them out occasionally to make our way through uh clothes pegs you know absolutely fantastic one of these this is what changed my life for doing wheels many years ago uh, until then i used to hand paint all my wheels now having one of these as you can see you just go to the size you want you would have seen me do it in all my videos before gives you a template for it as i said 99p from the pound shop and it worked an absolute treat okay so that's that one moving slightly around here if i can get the camera in uh, just down the side here so down here we've got various ipas we've got normal tap water we've got uh, airbrush cleaners we've got x20a i prefer it in this bottle to be honest than the other and then down the back there as you can see if i take this off the stand um we've got everything else running down there so i've got all my clears all my varnishes um i've got a can of spray we've got the pledge floor cleaners we've got all the ones you can imagine down there extra bottles of x20a and then we've got my little cutting mat just down there with all the bits on there it's all of the junk corner but it's everything that's to do with painting and spraying so when i'm doing that type of thing that's what i need okay up here we have my camera now this is i've converted all my cameras now around the entire studio are 4k so this one is the panasonic i can't remember even what it is now which is the hcv uh, xf uh, 990 uh, camera the great thing about this thing it runs off of usb so actually you can just plug it into usb and i've got my system pretty much around here is all worked into usb mode now so instead of having to run power cables around to it you can actually run it power it live off of a USB cable so that's really handy because as I say all my sockets are USB as well as normal sort of 240 volt so that's quite handy my studio lights which you can see here are little dinky ones now the reason these came out of necessity was purely because as you know my big I used to have an angle one that came over the bulbs kept blowing religiously so we've moved over to LED it's a lot more power efficient they're by VTAC and these ones are I've got to remember which ones they are now help and and got these i can't take any credit for these at all and put up the little link there he uses them in his one um these little 10 watt leds and they are seed leds and to be honest you'll be slightly blinded or hopefully the camera will play ball but as you can see there i use a little bit of filter paper over them the filter paper technically just gives it a diffuse light instead of being that pure led light gives it more of a natural hue gives it a little bit of a better spread um, and everything else as you can see it down on there it's not too overpowering but it gives us very nice quality of light to work with just under here now up into my cupboard which if i just move the tripod okay so in here what we need to do is we'll just unhook this so then this should if it doesn't catch on a cable which i think it is going to catch on the cable so it might be a little bit of a, a pull i want to show you this all in one if i can Hold on, if I can get this to come out, we can do everything in there together. Right, that's the problem. No, I'm not going to give up too easy. I'm trying to show you down in here. But that's our ducting system you can see in there. We go up two into one, into there, it comes up and it goes over and goes out. I still really could do with a hard 
piece running all of that. But in down there as well, we've got a trap. So it's got an anti-return on them. So it stops wind blowing in from outside, coming in uh, and going through everything just like that. So really that's what that one is for, okay? To try and sort of neglect that type of problem. So, okay, in here, as you can see, it is the overspill for everything I use. So we've got extra thinners in here. We've got cans of spray. We've got some clear, uh, crystal clear, um, resins, we've got stuff that I don't really use, uh, we've got the extra bottle tops, cleaners, sprays, at the top there we've got various things as well, so we've got gloves, uh, we've got uh, the that big tin there on the right is technically for doing casting resin, the one next to it is making resin, we've got an old bottle of Steinol res down there, we've got some plugs, we've got another airbrush, we've got more filters up there, that's old bulbs up the top there, the big ones you can see, not old ones but they all work. And then down in here, as you can see, we've got a very eclectic mix of all those bits and pieces we use. Indian ink, a lot of people ask us about the Indian ink ones. There it is, that's what we actually use. It's by Talons, absolutely fantastic. Evil glue, you can never have enough. And we got various things, so like when we did the Ducati, the bike, we've got the color there. We did the Red Bull, we've got the color that we have matched done for it there. We've got various bottles of Mr. Surfacer, all these different things in there. It's giant overspill for everything, uh, as you can imagine, around here in the cupboard set. You know, everybody has one, and I am no exception at all. I'm gonna get this back in now. That's that, that'll close in there, and then it closes like that, and that will all go in there. And there we go, so that is roughly it. Teeth, that was when we did the live shows. Uh, somebody sent us some teeth. Penny sent me her little pony, which Rainbow Dash. Sorry, Penny. Uh, and that is really it. That is my spray setup. Um, it's nice, it's comfy, it's practical. Again, a lot of the stuff that I do, you guys don't have to do. It's purely because out of necessity of filming with cameras and audio and light. Okay, so it is a little bit overkill, but it works really, really well. And it gives me the uh, capability of actually doing you know, producing models and you guys can see what I'm doing at the same time because it's all too often you see other guys do it and you can't see what they're doing because the camera's in the way or they've got the camera in the way and the model can't see what he's doing. So by me having the sort of overhead and side cameras coming in, then we have no problem at all uh, and it goes around uh, and quite a simple setup. But that's it. That's something we did this year to do this booth. I was going to do something even more with it, but again, it's overkill. I think you'd just be into that situation where you just have so much going on that it's not really worth it. Okay, uh, and by the time you sort of messed around with it and trying to do it, if it's working for you, then stop and you'll be absolutely fine. So there we go, that is tour time for today. Hope you've enjoyed the little tour around it. And as I say, next time on, we'll have a look at the overhead rig, the lighting system, uh, the computers we use, uh, and all the sort of techie bits and pieces, just like that. So there we go, quite interesting. Moisture in there, I know I'm gonna get loads of people say about it, moisture in the airline hose. It's not a, um, a thing that doesn't happen. To be honest, what happens is the cupboard down here with the doors on it, it's quite cold in there. Um, and there's a, 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 there's a void down below it as well, which is how I get the main air supply that comes in from the big compressor in the garage, a few feeds, things like that. It does get quite cold in there at night. Obviously there's no heating or anything in, in there. And the studio goes what I would call cold and dark when we're not in here. So consequently what happens is you do get sometimes if it's been quite a hot day, you've been doing a lot of airbrushing. And as you know, we were doing a lot on this on Monday, tons of it to go around and respraying it. The compressor gets hot, it gets quite warm in there, and what happens is the cylinder itself is nice and warm. At night, the temperature, to be honest, last night it was absolutely freezing because I had to de-ice the car at uh, half past six this morning. It was absolutely covered. I think just the temperature drop, the temperature indifference, it condenses in the pipes. And because that hose is a very long pipe and you've got air pressure, that's why you get the moisture in there. It happens a lot. That's why I like having a clear hose. I can visually see what's going in. And also the thing is when you're actually spraying with it, I don't know if this will reach these days, it's a little bit shorter, but I'm actually aware of what's coming up. So sometimes you can actually see a bit of water 
and if I can see it, I can stop it. And okay, I know the guys are gonna jump on this now saying, Phil, you can have a moisture trap in line one, as we call it, which is fitted here, I know. It's very rare it happens, it's just because the extreme changes of temperature at the moment between night and day. Because today, here we are, and it's 11 degrees out of the back, because it's been lovely and sunny. It warms up this side of the house, it gets very, very warm in here, but at night, at the moment, it's going cold. This is what this hose is doing. But as you say, it is clear now, I've been through it and everything else like that. And yeah, I have still got paint in there, note to self. That's why I was saying I'm an animal with airbrush, I never clean them out uh, but that's from doing that one but that's all that is it's very hot very warm in here studio lights everything else you can imagine it actually fries in here the guys who do the live stuff know how warm it can get in here then at night temperatures drop right low as well last night was really cold to be honest I didn't have the central heating on I forgot to put it on and then I think that's what it was so come in this morning you've got moisture lying in the hose that's all it actually is but you blow it through you'll be good to go it doesn't mean that your tank is full of water because clearly it's not okay because the moisture traps empty so it's just in the hose where it's been actually sat there for a while the other thing as well is obviously pressure I'm not going to go through the scientific thing but obviously if you pull the end off your airbrush like that and then dump it you get the sudden change in air pressure water to particles condense and do all that it's doing that as well but it's a nice way of just cleaning out your airbrush just blowing through that compressor let it totally empty out come up to pressure but that's the thing I don't actually let my compressors go empty at night I should do but I don't I just leave them always there they're always tuned up ready to go I've got good seals on them so they're never continuously just pumping normally they're quite happy to hold their own pressure for days on end obviously if I'm going away for the weekend or I know I'm not going to be doing any filming for a couple of days I might then empty them out and just let them naturally vent and then that way if you've got like you know obviously the taps open on it so to speak it can vent a little bit so you do get less rust build up inside the cylinder and stuff like that if you want to know about all of these things I will have a look for the link I can't guarantee I'd be able to find it today but we did a full thing about servicing you're actually your compressor emptying it out getting rid of the sludgy water you might remember it. I got covered in it after I'd already done it once that was the amazing thing uh, and stuff like that so what I'll do is I'll try and find that link again if I can I'll link it to the bottom of this video obviously members in the forum I'll link it down into the thread below and you can see about all these options what I'm going to try and do as well is dig out all the different things so I'll try and link in the video so if you want to see how we did this ducting work uh, and the, the sort of video log about building all of this and putting it together I'll get that sorted and then obviously I'll put links into the airbrushes that we've used uh, and all the equipment because they are being all standalone reviews at some point so that's just the all in capsule sort of one in there and I know we sort of covered it that's because I've got full reviews on everything that I use anyway so what I do is I'll try and get them sorted out and put up with you so there we go that's about it from me today tomorrow I'm gonna get this thing decked up we're going to really push on with this one, trying to get it all together, going to get the weapons fit, everything else like that is all going to be painted up as well. So we're going to hopefully have this thing looking very much the part, ready to go into weathering and everything versus on Thursday and Friday if I get the time with the reviews, but generally pushing on with that one. So there we go. Enjoy your uh, pancake day if you're in the UK and doing a bit of the old show Tuesday. Um, I know I will be, one of my favourites. So until tomorrow everybody, happy modelling, take care. Thank <laughs> you.